travel expenses for Computex 2018, paid for in part by Fractal Design. Yeah, if you haven't seen our coverage of the Fractal Define R6, you should gotta check out our videos on the Define R6. We've done a Threadripper build, we've done an i9 build. It's cool, it's quiet, it's competent, it's a really awesome case, and you should check out our videos on that. Travel expenses for Computex also paid in part by ASRock. Yes. ASRock, the many PCs and graphics cards, and ASRock's just building everything these days. Whether you swing Team Red or Team Blue, ASRock has got something for you, I think. So be sure to check out our coverage of all of their motherboards, everything from IOMMU groups to full UEFI tours, which I know only the people that are basically getting ready to pull the trigger look at those UEFIs. Everybody else doesn't care. So big thanks to ASRock for sponsoring us and you really should check out our other coverage of, of ASRock products and our coverage from Computex 2018. <laughs> All right, Computex day two. Oh God, the jet lag is real. Okay, the first thing is the AMD press event. And honestly, there wasn't really a lot new at the AMD press event. The, I'm gonna sort of reorder the press event into an order that kind of makes more sense. Okay, first up, AMD made a big show of thanking its partners and the people that help build systems. So we're talking Dell and Acer, and I'm, we are actually seeing Ryzen plus Vega and Ryzen in more and more portable devices. And these are not just, you know, like bulkier machines. These are thin and light machines, especially the Zen Plus, where they've sort of tweaked, you know, the power system and tweaked the, uh, <laughs> the other parameters of the CPU, and you get pretty good mobile performance, pretty good battery life, and a really compelling price point. And that's what AMD emphasized in their in their press release here. You know, they, they, they stopped short of saying, we're not going for the fastest thing that we can possibly get. We're going for the value proposition. But that was definitely the message that I heard from the press event. So they also talked about second gen Threadripper, and they had a demo of Threadripper. And I'm, I'm sort of skipping ahead to the end of the presentation. But that second gen Threadripper, man, that looked really amazing. They had it. They had the 24 core version of the second gen Threadripper um, sort of head to head against the 7980XE. That's the, the you know flagship Intel processor, at least the current gen the X299 flagship processor. And you know in rendering in Blender, of course, the 24 core CPU was faster, which is which is pretty impressive. The more impressive thing is that that was under an air cooler. That was done with a Cooler Master uh, Threadripper 2 cooler. So that's really impressive. The 7980XE was under an all-in-one uh, closed-loop cooler, so it had a you know it had a better situation in terms of cooling, and it was still slower. So I feel like that was that was pretty fair. They also had a sort of a quickie-ish, I guess, demo of the 32 core, but the 32 core wasn't going sort of head-to-head -head with anything. It was just another Blender demo. Now the one thing that I would have liked to have seen would have been a Cinebench demo because the day before yeah day one's intel press event intel demoed their you know five gigahertz 28 core machine but on day two it came out that that five gigahertz 28 core machine was being cooled by a one horsepower cooler so yeah one horsepower chiller or phase change something like that and that the the motherboard that was supplying power to that CPU was just <laughs> dumping a crazy amount of power into what appears to be uh, a Xeon CPU that has been unlocked. So there's a $10,000 Xeon CPU that has 28 cores right now today that you can buy. And, you know, it's 10 grand. But the all-core clock on that Xeon is 3.5, uh, 3.35 or 3.5 gigahertz, something like that. So Intel's done a special run of that one that is unlocked or that bend or something. And so they've dumped a crazy amount of power into it for their demo, and so at AMD's press event, is really sort of hard to compare apples to apples. And I think I'm gonna do a special on this. I think I'm, at the end of Computex, I'm, I'm working on something that's kind of a, kind of a, you know, AMD and Apple together. And I think that'll be really interesting. Maybe, well, <laughs> I, would, I, I wouldn't think that it would be. And anyway, I don't, I don't know. The other thing from the AMD press event was Vega 7 nanometer. This is the Radeon Instinct. So they said that they have 40% more die area to work with, or it's a 40% shrink, depending on how you want to look at that. And looking at the pictures and looking at the side by side, I mean, you know, Lisa Sue was on stage and the uh, die shrinkage seemed to be real. And they talked about, they didn't really make it clear. They really, they got to work on this aspect of their presentation because it's a lot more exciting than the presentation makes it sound. 
but Radeon Instinct gives you things like SRIOV being able to run GPU accelerated workloads in multiple VMs with a single graphics card. Of course, you know, I always harp on that, so no big deal. But also in the enterprise for machine learning and enterprise VDI type applications, I really think that uh, AMD is gonna lock it up. They also touted their partnership with Cisco and they did that sort of early in the presentation, but it sort of goes without saying that you've got that Cisco, you know, unified computing strategy platform plus Vega and seven nanometer. I don't think that's coincidence. I think that those things were far enough apart in the presentation that they probably didn't want to call too much attention to that. But I think those things are definitely related in terms of enterprise computing at Cisco. That was pretty much it for the, uh, the AMD press event. They were giving out free uh, Threadripper, like what was it? Threadripper heavy metal, Threadripper heavy metal t-shirts. Limited edition, you could only get it at the press release, but the press release is only supposed to last an hour. And I waited an hour and 15 minutes and I had another appointment I had to go to. So I had to go and they wouldn't let me have a t-shirt because I had to wait for the end of the press release. And it's like, well, I, I gave you 15 minutes. I, you, you 15 minutes over, what are we doing? So it's, uh, it's really, the, the, the weird thing about the venue is that it was in the third basement of the Westin. And so it's just like, is this a hitchhiker's guide thing? It's like, oh yeah, the, the AMD press event. It was at the, you know, the bottom of a locked filing cabinet in a disused lavatory and you know, whatever. So why, 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 why would, why would, why would they do that? I don't understand. And the, uh, the basement was also devoid of any kind of AMD decorations at all. It was just, there's a buffet and then you open the doors and then it's all just AMD and then it's all like really super exciting. But before that, not so much.